This time on Open Framework Super Basics, we take the sweary belligerent studio clock that we built last time using animation transforms. This time on Open Framework Super Basics, I'm making a mildly offensive belligerent clock to go into my studio. Put it into a Baroque frame on a monitor that we found in the rain in the junk and port our code to a Raspberry Pi. Over here in the stash, all these different screens that I've been collecting, including some beautifully large ones for different pieces of work. Um, and a number of different frames that I've been saving or using. And this particular one um, was in a piece of work that I had. Uh, which is going to come up later. Um, so there's a whole load of stuff that, you know, scavenging stuff, bring it back into the studio, it gets used, it doesn't get used, it lives for a certain amount of time, and then it gets released back into the wild. Going through a range of different screens, some beautiful old style Sony TVs. Um, I've got a bunch of Dell monitors with a Visa mount, some of which I've been stripping apart, which I think maybe I'll do a video about. And um, I've got a range of different beautiful smashed up ornate picture frames. And I love this contrast of taking these ornate gilded frames, especially when they're damaged. That's all about framing a context and about moving an artwork from one kind of context to another and putting them around scavenged old technology to reframe it. And in some ways it's super simple, super obvious, but it works and it stops and it dislocates and it reframes a perspective for looking at the work and recontextualizing it because it explicitly says, don't look at this as television. Don't look at this as the other kinds of screens that you see for you know, advertising or tourist information or flight times or you know, that noisy backdrop in a bar or a cafe or the garbage that you get pumped into your lounge. It says, look at this as the image, not as the device that it's signifying the particular kind of content or context. It's about switching the context. And I think this is the one that I want to use, which actually has a bunch of different context about it because of where it came from. Um, and I was repairing it the other day and I transported it, cycled it across to my studio and I've got to do some more repairs, which I kind of like. And there's a point where I should be pausing and doing this carefully. But there's also this other part that explicitly makes me not want to pause. And one of the things is that the Waiting for things to be perfect is the enemy of things being done. And that's really difficult. So everything is cabled up. The screen is working. We've got my Raspberry Pi. I've got a bunch of fresh um, micro SD cards. There's a 16 gigabyte one there. I'm going to flash this with a new Raspberry Pi OS install. Load it up. 
put open frameworks on here and then should be good. I'm gonna give this a little bit of encouragement and I'm gonna start where I'm seeing screws. So we'll keep going slowly, unclipping plastic. Here we have the control board, so we'll be careful about that, maybe. And that comes in here. Then we have our screen, which is looking about right, which is perfect for what we want to do. So we'll keep going with the back. And there we have our internal board. What's great is it's completely protected. Um, don't, don't pour water into it. We have small micro switches for selection and the LED on the front. Maybe we'll write what they are. So it's full of dirt and gruft in the back. I really like it like that. I like the exposed circuitry. It's still actually safe because all of the electronics are um, sealed. These are low voltage, so that's all good. Uh, don't pour water in it, but you should be good. And there it is, looking kind of beautiful and There we have a beautiful looking screen. I might fix that. I kind of love this contrast between the exposed circuit board and the broken parts of the frame down here. Just lovely. And actually I really like the dirt and everything has turned out beautifully. Uh, and just because I've secured it at the back temporarily will fix something nice for that. And there it is. And I have all the plastic trim and garbage, which will go off to the recycling. And I have my beautiful screen ready to put my belligerent sweary clock on, just to remind me what kind of time it is. So I'm going to raspberrypi.org and I'm just going to go to software. I'm going to be using the Raspberry Pi imager. And I can tell it to use that directly and that will download. It recognizes my storage device. 
So I choose the Raspberry Pi OS, which is the advantage of using the Raspberry Pi imager that it'll download that for me. I choose my storage device and then write it and it'll erase the storage device. So make sure that it's the right one. And that will now burn me a new SD card with a fresh install. I can put it into my Raspberry Pi and then I'll manually download Open Frameworks on it. So the image is downloaded and now it goes into the verifying cycle and after it's done the verification, we'll be ready to go. So I finished flashing the Raspberry Pi card and it's ejected. I can pull it out and stuff it into the Raspberry Pi, which I've got set up over here. And it goes in just at the end and it's all ready to boot. And now I can download Open Frameworks on it, port the code to it, uh, and then we'll go over to the bench over the back and start attacking it to get it into a frame. We've booted our Raspberry Pi. We've chosen the desktop option, which makes it super simple for us. The first time we boot, we give it a network. It's gonna go and synchronize the clock for us, which we will need. And it'll also do a quick check to see if there's updates, which I'm very happy about. Security updates, patches, code reworks, etc. Okay, so the system is up to date. So I can go to Open Frameworks, full, and I'm going to download for Linux ARM version six and follow the setup guide for Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna make a new folder where I'm gonna do my development, which I'm gonna call developer. And in here, I'm gonna unzip my Open Frameworks download into my home Pi developer folder. And now I have Open Frameworks and I can go on to the next step in the Raspberry Pi setup guide. So I'm gonna follow the instructions in the Raspberry Pi setup guide and then I'll be ready to go. So following the instructions, I go to the Linux Debian scripts install folder and then run the sudo install dependencies and it will go through and download any additional files that the current version of Open Frameworks needs to run on the ARM6 processor. The whole of the Open Frameworks editions, including OpenCV and a whole load of other libraries, are downloaded and updated. I can go and check whether everything is ready. So I'm gonna CD change directory out of here. Go into the examples and the advanced 3D example. And then I can say make. And this is now gonna compile for the first time. It's gonna take quite a while. So our example has compiled. And now if we hit make run release, we get a beautiful example running on our Raspberry Pi. So Open Frameworks is installed. We've got the additional libraries downloaded. We've compiled our first example and we're ready to work on our own one, which is a belligerent clock that we looked at last time. So I'm gonna go and get the source code and I cloned the source code into a Git repository. I can either download a zip file, but in this instance, I'm gonna Git clone 
the repo into the Open Frameworks My Apps folder just like normal. And from here are all of the examples that I've been working on. Copy the URL into My Apps folder. And then I'm going to use git clone, paste in the URL, and that's going to clone all of the repository, including my belligerent clock. But we'll get it downloaded and double check that it compiles. And then we can try it inside our frame and see what we've got. So I've duplicated the make file so it compiles. And then I can say make run release. Run it up full screen. And there it is. I'm going to make a, I think a minor edit in my develop folder, my apps, my apps, belligerent clock in the source code. Make run release. And there we go. I got a new clock for my studio. So if you uh, enjoyed this, please hit the subscribe. Um, you can download the source code at the link below. Uh, there's going to be a load more videos. Um, but if you want, you can download the source code, build your own. Please send me links, let me know what you've been building. And if you like this, uh, let's do some not NFT stuff. And I will see you on a future video. Thanks very much. Bye.